Um, so today, I just want to start with some questions that you guys might have, whether they're from the review or the worksheets or the homeworks or um, kind of whatever. I think last time we talked about the test format, so I don't really want to do that again unless there's um, specific questions about that. Um, and that's going to be basically the plan for today, basically looking at uh, what we did on the homework quizzes and stuff. I think that chapter five is probably enough to uh, hold your guys' focus on, and I'm not going to start chapter six until next week, or until after the test anyways. Um, and that'll be the last, the last thing I want to cover for the semester. So if we can, goal is to finish chapter six, and we'll just try to end this chapter, or end the semester with a chapter six test, and that'll be it for the semester. We won't do a final exam given uh, what class currently looks like. So it'll just be a chapter six test end the semester and we'll move on about our business to semester two. And hopefully we'll see this back in face to face, but who can tell, right, the way the world's looking right now. So <clears throat> we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Um, so yeah, today, chapter five test. Let's worry about that. Um, if you guys have questions on anything, you can say it out loud or you can type it into the chat. Um, the chat's usually a little bit easier for me because then I can keep track of multiple things going on at the same time. Um, but that's that's basically the our only agenda item for today. Be on team one for the review. Absolutely. All right. Let's grab that one. So Haley, we're asking about this one right here in particular, correct? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um so looking at this, uh, we have a couple of different options in terms of kind of where to start or what to start with. Um, Haley, what was your idea in terms of which side to start? I don't think we can see your screen. Oh, anymore. yes, absolutely you can. Let me, let me fix that. That's a great point. Thank you. That should be better. Move this thing over here. Okay. Now you can see, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so Haley, what what did you what did you think to do first here for this problem? Did you have any ideas or even which side you wanted to start with? Because there's lots of different ways we could go about this one in particular. I was going to start on the left side. Okay, that sounds great. I think that's a perfectly reasonable place to start. Um, what uh, what did you want to do first? Did you have any ideas on where to start with this one? Not really. Okay. I was just kind of having trouble starting. Okay. Perfectly reasonable thing to have going on. Um, on a problem like this, if you, once we've selected the left-hand side to start with, if you're not sure where to start, I would start by just writing everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I can write secant as 1 over cosine. And then I can write sine or tangent as sine over cosine. Okay. 
And now what I have is like a complex fraction, right? If you remember back to your Algebra 1 class, or I'm sorry, Algebra 3, 4 class last year, you dealt with simplifying things that looked like this. We called those things like complex fractions. This problem that we have now is basically the same thing as a complex fraction. <clears throat> Just instead of x's and y's, like I wrote in blue, we have cosine of x's and sine of x's. But it's still ostensibly the same kind of problem. Does this look familiar, Haley? Yes. Okay. I just want to, I'm, I'm making some analogies, and I don't want it to be, like, con more confusing. Uh, I'm trying to scaffold it onto something we're already kind of familiar with. Um, so when we simplified a complex fraction, there's two ways to do that. You could combine like terms in the numerator and denominator and then like multiply by the reciprocal. Um, or you could like kind of clear the fractions. This one, it's so easy to deal with um, just combining the like terms that that's what I think that's what I'll do here. So to make a common denominator, I'm just going to turn one into cosine over cosine. that turns into this. Are we okay there? Again, all I did was write 1 as cosine over cosine and then wrote it as a single fraction, the numerator. So that's going to allow me to simplify this by multiplying by the reciprocal. So division of fractions is the same thing as the multiplication of the reciprocal. And that's going to allow me to cancel out the cosines. So that brings me to here. And this is starting to look a little bit better, right? At least now we've got a single fraction again. We got rid of the complex fraction part. So if I look at where I'm trying to get to now, I need a 1 minus cosine in the denominator. Right now I just have a sine in the denominator. But if I look at the numerator, I have a 1 plus cosine. And I know that 1 plus cosine and 1 minus cosine is a difference of two squares. So it might be a good idea here. I know often good things happen if I make a difference of two squares. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus cosine. And if we remember, this is like a modified version of that first Pythagorean. And now we can reduce the signs and we're there. Um, Haley, does that feel okay with what we did there? Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, does anybody have a follow-up on this one before I move on to number 30 from the homework? Okie dokie.
So number 30 from the homework. is 3 tan squared x plus or minus 1 is equal to 8. So I'm going to first start by trying to get the tan squared by itself. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides and then divide both sides by 3 and then square root both sides. And remember, when we square root both sides of an equation, it creates a plus or minus. So this is going to break into two equations then, one where we're equal to the minus and one where we're equal to the positive. But if I remember here about tangent, remember tangent is um, equal to y over x. So if I think about this as square root 3 over 1, that's not really that helpful because there's no place on the unit circle where the y coordinate is the square root of 3 and the x coordinate is 1. So I'm at a little bit of a loss, but if I look at the unit circle, there's a place where the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, and the x coordinate is 1 half. So if I think about just kind of multiplying the top and bottom by 1 half, that is something I can find on my unit circle. So I'm going to go there. And look at that. Go to my unit circle. And since I want positives and negatives, I'm looking for any place where the x coordinate is 1 half and the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. So I have pi over 3. I also have 2 pi over 3. And then I have 4 pi over 3. And 5 pi over 3. So that's 1, 2, 4, and 5. Hi everybody, sorry about that, um, apparently the call dropped on my end. So Anthony, this was, this was your question, I believe. I lost the record from the chat also when the call dropped. Um, are we okay with how we've gotten to this point here? I can certainly go back and reiterate. I'm not sure when the call started getting fuzzy on us.
Hi, everybody. Sorry about this. We've all been here. Um, I guess I'm having internet trouble at my end as well. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, is things going better? Or the connection seem better? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so, Anthony, I think we were working, this question was yours, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know where the call got started to get fuzzy for you guys, or if it's been pretty bad the whole time. Um, were we, were we okay with how I had gotten to here, or do I need to backtrack a little bit? I think I'm good. I don't know. Okay. Much, okay. I'm good. Okay. Um, so this is our answer for part A, anyways. For part B, we can just tack on a plus 2 pi k to each of these. Or if we're being clever, um, you might notice that these two are pi units apart. So really we could combine them together into a single solution. Now you don't need to do that, um, but if you're taking like a multiple choice test, it would probably be written as a single solution rather than two separate ones. And the fact that this was a tangent one we solved for should be a good indicator that that should be something that happens since the period for tangent is pi instead of 2 pi. Remember when we graphed them? Um, so that combining of solutions into a single response is pretty common. Um, for part C, this will be 0 to 2 pi. This was all of them. This is negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. Okay, so all of our answers from part A are still going to be answers in part C. So we can recopy those. And since all of these answers are positive, if we go to the next coterminal answer after these, we have to add two pi, so they're all going to be too big. So I can don't have to worry about anything bigger than these. Um, but I do have to worry about the stuff smaller. So if I subtract two pi from each of these, I should also encounter an answer. So two pi is six pi over three if I make a common denominator. So when I subtract it from 2 pi, I get negative 4 pi over 3. When I subtract it from 5 pi over 3, I get negative pi over 3. When I subtract it from pi over 3, I get negative 5 pi over 3. And when I subtract it from 4 pi over 3, I get negative 2 pi over 3. And then for part D, this is negative pi to 4 pi. So I'm just going to copy down. I know my answers for part to be answers here. So I just can recopy those. And then I'm going to look at my other answers from part C and pick the ones that are bigger than negative pi. So this one and this one. They're small. They're less than negative pi, so I'm going to ignore them. And then I have to worry about the answers between 2 pi and 4 pi. So to get that, I'm just going to add 2 pi to each of these to find the next coterminal answer. So adding 2 pi is the same as adding 6 pi over 3, making a common denominator. So I get uh, these answers then as my last, and then I'm done with this one. Again, there's a lot of parts on that, so there's a bit to do.
Um, Anthony, were you okay with what we did there? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, who's next? Do we have more? I lost the chat. I don't know if anybody else had added questions in an after Anthony because when the call dropped, the chat got wiped on me, so... I don't really know if there's anything else there. Um, so you'll have to help me out. I apologize for having to you guys having to repeat yourselves if there was anybody else there. Um, but you know, sometimes stuff happens, right? Okay. Um, well, there is one thing that I want to talk about here from worksheet one that I think is worth discussing. So I'm going to steal that and do one of these problems here. And the problem that I want to do is number two. Um, because this was quite similar to one of the questions on the homework quiz that caused a bit of problems for us. Um, so to solve two, the first thing we need to do is to get everything onto one side. So I need to subtract tangent x from both sides. I cannot divide both sides by tangent x because you're going to end up losing solutions when you do that. Obviously when tangent x is equal to 0, there's a solution. And if you divide that out of there, we've lost the ability to obtain that solution. So you can't divide away a variable just like when you solved um, like polynomial equations way back in Algebra 3-4 last year. If you had like a greatest common factor of x, you can't just divide both sides of the equation by x to get rid of it because you end up losing that solution. The same idea here. So we, we can't do that. I saw lots of people doing that on the homework quiz. So I wanted to make sure that I talked about that today. So what we want to do is once we've moved everything onto one side, we can take out that greatest common factor of tangent x. And then we can apply the zero product property. And so I can solve each one of these two separately. So I'm looking for the angles where tangent is 0, where sine is negative 1, and where sine is positive 1. So tangent is y over x. So tangent is 0, where the y-coordinate is 0. So that's at 0 and at pi. Sine is equal to negative 1. 1, why did you split up the sine and tangent? So you're talking about this step here, Gracie? Okay. So let me draw a little analogy for you. Um, let's say we had um, x squared y minus y is equal to 0. We can take out that greatest common factor of y, and then we'd apply like the zero product property to write them as two separate equations, right? Do you remember doing that last year in your Algebra 3-4 class? Okay, so same idea here. Um, anyways, where were we? Uh, sine is equal to negative one, 
at 3 pi over 2 and positive 1 at pi over 2. That's where the y coordinate is 1. And we think that we were done. However, we're not. And we're not done because this problem has both a tangent in it and a sine and a co or a sine or a cosine in it. So why is that a problem? Why are we why aren't we done? So you remember when we graphed tangent functions, they had a vertical asymptote on them, right? When we graph tangent, it kind of like that, right? Where we had vertical asymptotes everywhere or at some places. The vertical asymptote represents a value or an angle measure that causes tangent to be undefined, right? So we need to check these answers for sine to make sure that they don't make tangent undefined. Because if they make tangent undefined, they are actually like an extraneous solution. So again, let me kind of draw an analogy from last year. So you remember when you solve uh, rational equations where you had something like, you know, you solved equations that looked like this. And when you were done, you got these answers and you had to make sure that when you plugged them, you didn't get a zero denominator, right? Because if it gave you a zero denominator, it would mean that equation becomes undefined and that we don't count those. The same idea here, because tangent can be undefined in places, we have to make sure that we take these other answers that we got from solving the sine part and plug them back in to make sure they don't make tangent undefined. So when I go and I look at, um, say, 3 pi over 2, the coordinate at 3 pi over 2 is 0, negative 1. So tangent is y over x, which would mean this was negative 1 over x, or negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. So that solution is actually extraneous. We don't want to count that one. Similarly, pi over 2, the xy there is 0, 1, which is y over x. So this is also undefined, so we don't want to count that solution either. We only want those two. So do we always have to worry about this extraneous solution stuff? No, no, you don't. It's only in situations where you have... Um, two different trig functions in the same problem that are not both sine and cosine. If the two different trig functions are both sine and cosine, no big deal, like the one on the homework quiz had sine and cosine in it, so it wasn't a big deal. Here, though, if you had sine and tangent, or sine and cotangent, or sine and cosecant, or sine and secant, or cosine and tangent, or cosine and cotangent, or cosine and, or and secant, or cosine and cosecant. There you have to worry about um, checking for extraneous solutions because those tangents and secants and cotangents and cosecants can all become undefined at places. So you have, if you have more than one trig function and one of them is tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant. We have to make sure that we're checking for those extraneous solutions. Um, so if we look at number one, we have tangent and cot or cosine in it. So this is one where we would have to check. Um, oops, tangent is yellow. This is one that we would have to check for extraneous solutions. This one has just tangents. Don't have to worry about it. Just signs, don't have to worry about it. Oh, and I don't think I took the rest of this worksheet. 
This one has just signs, don't have to worry about it. Again, just sign, don't have to worry about it. Just sign, don't have to worry about it. Here we have sine and cosine, but they're not like two separate functions. It's one nested inside of the other, so we don't have to worry about it there either. Um, but I wanted to make sure we mentioned this as something that can happen. Because I don't know if you guys had gotten to the worksheet one or not, or had seen that in the key and understood exactly what was going on there. But I wanted to mention that while we had a chance. Okay. Um, any final questions here from the review or the homeworks or anything at all? Okay. Very good. I want to say one last thing. Um, on the on the homework quizzes, when I was looking at those. Um, I was a little disappointed by the honesty going on. Um, there was obvious places where we'd either worked together or we had looked something up um, and we used identities that we had not talked about in class and you'd have no business knowing. Um, I encourage you that even though I know we're working at home, and I can't really watch you what you're doing with your computer, um, that it is still oftentimes quite obvious when students have looked things up and used resources other than themselves. Um, now I'm gonna talk chalk this last one up to a misunderstanding and directions about what's okay and not okay. Um, but from this point forward, really I did, I encourage you strongly to make sure you're doing the work yourself um, and that going forward that that will become an issue if if we're not um, if it's you know if it's obvious that you're using some other resource um, to do things either whether it be another student or each other or you know googling something on the internet um, so please 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 just do your own work and do your work honestly um, Okay, so that that's all. That's all I wanted to say about that. We'll let that go from, you know, at this point. Um, so I, that's all I need from you guys today. Thank you for showing up. I know it's early. I know you're tired. I'm exhausted too. Um, so uh, I'm going to dismiss everybody from class so you can continue to work on your reviews or go through things. If you see anything you want to ask questions about, you can shoot me an email during the course of the week. Um, and I'll try to get back to you relatively promptly. Reminder, the test is Friday. Um, and then uh, just before you go, to type bye into the chat. And have a nice day, and we'll see you guys on Friday. Mr. Quilly? Yes. Uh, are you checking the review? Like, do we have to do everything? Or Yes. You should, you should do the review. That's an assignment. I'll check that on Sunday night. All right as part of the homework check. Okay. Yep. No problem. Mr. Cook, my chat isn't working. Okay. That's okay. You okay, can, sorry. you just, that's, that's fine. It happens. No problem, Haley. I appreciate you letting me know though. Me, are you waiting because you have something that you want to talk to me about, or are you just um, taking your time? It's fine if you're just taking your time. I just wanted to, just figured I'd ask before I move on and start doing other things. Or maybe we're just frozen or something. <laughs>